Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Deep Penetration Podcast. My name is Danny, and I am a love and self-esteem coach that works with the LGBTQ community. Um, but even if you are not part of the community, that is totally fine. Every single person is welcome on this podcast. You know, I think that educating yourself and knowledge is power. Um, and, you know, just having uh, an inquisitive mind and wanting to learn things and wanting to know things, like I think that is that is how we build community and how we connect to one another. Um, if you are part of the LGBTQ community, the reason for why I created this podcast was because I wanted to create a resource. I wanted to, you know, be able to talk about things very candidly and very open, um, particularly now when there's so many different crazy things that are going on, but specifically it's more so geared towards self-development, self-esteem, embracing self-identity, navigating and managing um, romantic relationships and love, understanding how to have a healthy relationship, all of those great things. Um, I have been a life and a relationship coach for the past few years, and I have worked with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of clients um, over these past few years. So a lot of the subject matter that was coming up and a lot of the topics that were coming up, there was consistent patterns in every single uh, case that I worked um, with. So for me, the biggest thing was, okay, well, there seems to be some consistency here. There seems to be some patterns here. So why don't I write down a list of the topics that are the most popular and that seem to come up consistently and just talk about it. Um, have open conversations with you guys. Obviously, if you have experienced these topics yourself, this subject matter, if you haven't yet and you have questions, this is, again, an open platform. So comments are welcome. Experiences are welcome. I love all of it. So that being said, today's topic is one that actually it hits close to home for me. And the topic is about bisexuality. So bisexuality in the queer community and navigating that. First and foremost, I want to start by saying if you are somebody who identifies as bisexual, you are valid. I see you, I understand your struggle, and it is, to be quite honest with you, an issue within the queer community that I sometimes even have difficulty wrapping my head around the level of discrimination and identity invalidation and marginalization, even within our community. And to be honest with you, it kind of pisses me off because, you know, there is so much rich and beautiful history when it comes to queer history and how we got to where we are and our ability to exercise our our freedoms and our and and express ourselves in a way where we you know can openly come out and say that we are queer that we are gay lesbian bisexual transgender there have been so many um there's been so much progress in regards to legalities when it comes to the queer community, particularly in the United States. Unfortunately, right now, I feel like we're kind of taking a step backwards, but you know, my hope is that those things will be rectified and we will maintain our freedoms. And you know, I, I don't want to go too far into the political aspect of it, but generally speaking, you know, there's a lot to be proud of about our community. However, if you are somebody who has been in the community for quite some time and have experienced the dynamics of the community, there is a lot of judgment and criticism, discrimination and categorization and, and all of those things. So how is it that if you are an individual that is bisexual, you can, you can navigate these things, you can, you can work through these things from my personal experience this is the feeling that I get. Um, I'm not accepted in the community fully because of the fact that I am bisexual, which means um, for a lot of people, and this is the feedback that I've heard in my life, um, you're gay, you just haven't figured it out yet, or it's just a phase, or you know, you're just not comfortable with yourself quite yet. And I'm not fully accepted by the heterosexual community because they don't understand the concept of bisexuality um, or or you know, being able to like same sex or different sex. So 
we're kind of in this like weird limbo phase. And there was an article that I was reading that I found really interesting. And I believe it was published in the New York Times and it was called, uh, you know, a, a double closet. So essentially we are in a closet inside of a closet, even within our own community. And this word gets tossed around a lot and it's biphobia, right, in the community. And in no way do I want to invalidate that term because I think that experience is very real for a lot of people. However, I just don't necessarily know if biphobia is the correct term because if we actually look at what the definition of phobia is, it's in reference to essentially an extreme or an irrational fear um, or an aversion to something. So the aversion part of it makes sense, but I don't necessarily think that people are petrified of people who are bisexual. Um, what I think it is, is a a level of, of mm, how do I put it? Um, I think they are uncomfortable with it because of their lack of understanding or knowledge around that particular identity, right? So being bisexual. So if we are unfamiliar with something, there are two things that we can do. Number one, we can ask questions to gain clarity so that we can have an understanding. Or two, we vilify it. And by vilifying it, we separate it from ourselves because it is something that we do not understand. And that is, that is what I feel happens a lot within the community. There's almost this kind of like dismissive nature of people who are bisexual. And one of the terms that identifies that is something called identity um, invalidation. And essentially, I have it right here, identity invalidation is an experience in which others deny, negate, or refuse to accept an individual's identity. And the irony in all of this is that as a queer community, we have fought for so long to be validated, to be seen, to not be negated, to not you know, be refused any of our rights. So to have that experience within that community in and of itself just feels incredibly hypocritical to me. I'm not saying that every single person in the community is this way. I'm not saying that every person who is gay or lesbian is that way towards an individual that is bisexual. That is not the case. You know, there are a lot of very accepting people who are out there, but the general consensus and the experience in and of itself is one of identity invalidation. And it's taken me a while to be able to really understand, you know, how that works. But let me ask you a question. So if you are somebody who does not necessarily understand bisexuality and you're somebody who does not believe that bisexuality actually exists, why would a person choose to identify as bisexual when they know that that is going to be a much harder road to go down? Why wouldn't that person just say, I'm gay or I'm lesbian? Right? Why wouldn't they just identify as something else to not have to deal with the the discrimination and the invalidation and the marginalization? There has to be a reason for why they're choosing the harder road. And it's because that is truly how they identify. That is truly how I identify, right? As an individual who is bisexual. And for me, I think gender is on well, I think sexual preference and sexual identity is on a spectrum. And for an individual who is bisexual, it does not necessarily mean that you like men and women 50-50. It's on a scale. So it can be 60-40, it can be 30-70. I have worked with many clients who have been in relationships with women for many years, get out of that relationship and very happily get into a relationship with a man and there really isn't an issue in regards to transition there, right? For myself, I was in a relationship for 13 years with a woman and somebody who I truly loved. And, you know, we shared a lot of great memories together and, and built a life together and all of those things. But I've always identified as somebody who was bisexual. So once that relationship ended, you know, dating men wasn't something that was weird to me. It wasn't something that felt off. It wasn't something that felt forced because it is a very natural part of who I am. And if we really look at like the numbers and the statistics, a higher percentage of individuals, particularly in the, in the LGBTQ community, identify as bisexual. So let me just read this for you guys. It says, in a study published in November of 2019 called A Qualitative Examination of Bisexual Identity and Validation, 
and its consequences for well-being, identity, and relationships. 52 individuals were surveyed and 85% experienced identity invalidation. So these are individuals who identified as bisexual and experienced identity invalidation within the community. Um, they described five perceived reasons. So these are the five main reasons, right? So the first one was others didn't understand bisexuality. So what I was just talking about. The second one was the gender of their partner did not fit with others' beliefs about bisexuality. So for example, an individual who identifies as bisexual. So let's say you are male, you identify as bisexual, and you are in a relationship with a woman. The perception from everybody else is how can that person be in a relationship with a woman if he is also attracted to men, which to be honest with you, inadvertently creates a lot of pressure for that relationship. It puts a lot of pressure on that partner. So you have to have a partner who's very accepting and very open-minded to be able to handle and navigate the, the opinions and the criticism from people around the relationship, right? The other part of this, so number three, was others believed they were confused, right? So I hear this all the time, and I'm sure you've probably experienced this yourself if you are bisexual, is, oh, you're just confused. Um, you're just not comfortable with your sexuality yet. You will you are gay. You're just not there yet. Like All of those things really make you question your decision and yourself and whether you are bisexual or you know maybe you are kind of repressing a part of yourself that truly is gay and you just haven't figured it out. So it's... It, it affects us on a on a deeper psychological level that impacts our self identity and our self esteem. Uh, the fourth one was others believed they were faking it, and the fifth one was others rejected bisexuality for religious reasons. Now we know that religion has always played a part in our acceptance or acceptance of us as a community, but the faking it one is hard for me. And the reason for why is, you know, when you finally decide to go through the process of coming out and embracing who you are and accepting who you are, and and you go through the emotional turmoil, the mental turmoil, the narratives in your head, the stories that you create, the fears that you have of expressing this to your friends and your family, and you're met with somebody who says, oh, you're just faking it just for the attention, that does a number on you psychologically because it dismisses your entire experience. So I really want people to understand that no matter what your sexual preference is, no matter what your identity is, no matter what your gender, no, not, anything, that is your decision, that is your choice, and that is a life that you choose to live. And there is nothing wrong with that you are a whole person and respect i think is warranted you know particularly within the community us supporting one another is is absolutely necessary but i do think that a lot of the criticism comes from subjective experiences of rejection if you are somebody who has been hurt deeply hurt by people around you that you trusted, then it makes you skeptical of the world. It makes you, it, it can turn you into somebody who's a little bit more jaded, a little bit more hypercritical, a little bit more opinionated, right? Because, you know, it's a common phrase, hurt people hurt people. So if, if you have experienced that rejection, you want other people to experience that rejection as well. And for me, the biggest thing is that a lot of that has to do with doing the shadow work and the self-development and really kind of diving deep to our, into ourselves and saying, why does this make me uncomfortable? So if you are somebody who is uncomfortable with an individual who is bisexual, you have to ask yourself the question, why? Just like there are people out there who are uncomfortable with you being gay or you being lesbian or you being trans or whatever the case may be, how is that experience for you? How does that make you feel? Does that make you feel good about yourself? And if the answer is no, then why would you do that to somebody else? We have to stick together. We have to support one another. We have to create a community of, of, of you know, open-mindedness and diversity and, and really just accepting each other for who we are. Um, and just to add to that survey, you know, 
here's here's another survey that I thought was really interesting. So in a survey conducted by Gallup in 2020, more than half of the LGBT community identified as bisexual, 54.6% compared to gay at 24.5% and lesbian at 11.7%. So a majority of our community is identifies as bisexual. So this isn't a phase. This isn't a fad. This is who we are as a person. So if you are somebody who identifies as bisexual and you have really been struggling with the acceptance factor and explaining yourself, because it's what I essentially like to call like the perpetual coming out process, where if you are gay and you tell somebody I'm gay, that's like a one-time coming out because there really isn't much to explain. You are 100% attracted to the same sex. So there really isn't that much more that you have to explain. I'm not trying to invalidate your experience because every person's experience is different and it's subjective. And maybe you did have to continually come out to multiple people. But when you are bisexual and you come out to somebody, there's a whole different level of questioning and trying to understand that concept because a lot of people can't wrap their heads around the fact that you are attracted to both sexes, right? Male and female. So it's like this perpetual coming out process where it's not only me coming out to you, but it's also me having to explain to you what it means to be bisexual. And to be honest with you, that's not my responsibility to explain that to you. You either accept it or you don't. But here's the thing. I have come to learn that over the years, I would rather educate people than not. I would rather teach people, inform people about what it is to be bisexual rather than allowing that person to remain in a state of ignorance or, or lack of understanding or lack of education around it. Because oftentimes when we provide information, knowledge, facts to people, even if they don't agree, it allows them to have a deeper understanding and potentially empathize, right? So if you are struggling, number one, I see you, you are enough. You are not alone. You are not the only person who has experienced this. There are a heap ton of articles and, and you know, research that has been done around bisexual. Well, actually, you know what? I don't even want to say a heap ton because there really isn't. Um, but there are articles and research that has been done around biphobia and identity invalidation for bisexuals within the queer community. But not only that, there are also support groups. There are also groups out there specifically for bisexuality that if you feel like you just need a little bit more support, I would highly recommend taking a look at those. I will provide those resources in the details down below. But at the end of the day, you have two choices. Number one, you can allow people's ignorance to impact you in a negative way way and you can carry that around with you or number two you can choose to educate people and then let it go right if you identify as bisexual then that is what you identify as that is who you are that is fantastic that is amazing you are beautiful you are accepted you are understood you are seen you are part of a larger group of people and what other people think about you I know it's easy to say shouldn't matter because it is going to matter. I understand that that helps to kind of shape our our personalities and how we navigate um, within the community. But at the end of the day, just understand that that is their lack of education and their lack of understanding. So if they are uncomfortable with it, it has something to do with them. It has nothing to do with you. And there is a quote that I, I live by and that I love. And essentially what it says is the vision of you, the vision of me you have in your mind is not my responsibility. I'll say it again. The vision of me you have in your head is not my responsibility. I really want you to sit and think about that one because that one's more of like a deep think quote. All of that to say, you are not alone. You are perfectly fine the way that you are, and other people's miseducation or ignorance should not impact how you navigate your life, your relationships, or how you view yourself. I have hopes that, you know, we will become a more united community, a more accepting community, a community that understands diversity and really goes back to our roots and how we got to where we are today. I hope you guys found this episode um, informative. 
Obviously, I would love to have this conversation with anybody else. If you are bisexual, if you have that experience, if you, you know, feel like you are struggling or you're just not being, you know, seen or heard or understood, leave a comment. Let me know. Reach out to me. Um, I love to have conversations with people. Obviously, I have coaching sessions one on one with people all the time who are struggling with their identity, their self esteem, the way they view themselves, um, and the acceptance process. Right. I think that's a very important part of all of this. All that to say. I hope you guys utilize this as a support system. I hope you guys feel comfortable. Um, and I hope that you feel that you can share your story with me because I would love to hear it. Um, if you guys enjoy the podcast, if you guys are enjoying the, the content, please make sure you are subscribing because it gives me the ability to have these open and candid conversations with you guys. So it is incredibly helpful and I would really appreciate it. Again, my name is Danny. Um, Thank you for sticking around and listening to this podcast or watching this podcast, however you are, are experiencing it. And I will see you guys in the next episode of Deep Penetration.